Yeah. Hello, everyone. This is a flashback. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot a of... Uh, you were a lot thinner. Than, I am a lot thinner, yeah. It's like a little PTSD of, uh, I can still hear Fickle yelling at me. Over <laughs> James, what were the deciding factors when you put him back to Columbus? Uh, alma mater. You know, obviously, it's a... Uh, I love the game of football, you know, and, and I love working with young people. So that's why I got into coaching. You, you, you want to impact the kids on the field, but more importantly, you want them to leave after building relationships with them as better men, you know, and as hopefully give them an example of what being a good husband and father can be. Same thing that Luke Fickle did for me and same thing Jim Trestle did for me. And so you pair that with your alma mater, you pair that with Columbus, Ohio. And, uh, you know, when it became something that could happen, I asked my wife and our girls and, you know, it was pure giddiness at that point that we could be coming back home. So it was a great opportunity and thankful for Coach Day for providing it. Did you approach about coming here or did you inquire about coming here? Just wanted to know, um, you know, how much flexibility I would have to help with the linebackers. You know, obviously, uh, Coach Knowles is, uh, from everything I've heard, a fantastic and brilliant mind. So being able to uh, have an influence on the room and obviously working you know, under, under Coach Knowles will be a big part of that. But I had a lot of responsibility in South Bend with the linebacker room and uh, you know, look forward to kind of earn, earning everybody's trust you know, here in the building and kind of learning his scheme and how he wants to go about things. Well, when this idea came about, basically, even before last year, the question was, do you really want to put in the hours to be a coach? Yeah. When you had a successful coach in here, I'm sure that you, know, you didn't have to do this. Yeah. What is it about coaching that that made you decide, yes, this is something I want to commit to? It's obviously a very demanding thing. Yeah, the, I mean, the hours are, uh, they're tough. You know, recruiting is a world that, you know, you're not being in it for a year. It's a... It's a 24 7 deal you know and so it's, it takes up a lot of your time but if you're organized you can you can make it all happen and and still uh you know be a, a big family person but i think for coaching for me it's you're impacting young people in the game that you love it's i've played this game since i was in fourth grade i've loved playing it it's been obviously a deep passion of mine i love being still around the game when i was doing media it was just close enough you know to get the juices flowing and then I had to find out whether I wanted to do it, and so I just um, took an opportunity, and I'm thankful to Marcus, obviously, for giving me that opportunity and trusting me um, to put in that work. And, and you learned a lot about yourself throughout the last year. You know, when you don't have a template for how you want to teach, you really got to start from scratch. Like, all right, how do I want to teach these guys the position? The last time I had talked ball in a locker room setting was when I'm with the New Orleans Saints. So the level of which you can talk football and route concepts and alignments and all that, you have to kind of pair, you forget what they don't know. And, um, and then each kid's different, right? You gotta teach player A and player B maybe completely differently. So learned a lot about myself as a teacher. And then by the time fall came around, I felt, felt like I was in a good rhythm. How did that go with Ryan Dago when you here? Um, he first inquired, you know, if I was something I'd be interested in. Um, I said I have to check with the boss, who is my wife. Um, she was, you know, absolutely, you know, as long as you feel like you'd be happy and have the same kind of impact on the linebacker room that I that I did up there. And then it just kind of kept going back and forth. It, he was, um, you could sense his passion that he really wanted to bring me back, that he thought the timing was right, and that. Um, he really thought that I could help the room and, and help Coach Knowles out and just kind of be another another voice there to kind of help. So I think his determination was kind of the, the factor of, yeah, this isn't just a, um, you know, a, an information call. It's something that they really wanted to get done. So What was Marcus's reaction when you came and were leaving from here? Um, you know, there's, I hate to let people down just by nature. That's who I am. Um, but it was it was tough because like he, Marcus and I go back I mean to freshman year and you know in each other's weddings and the whole deal. So thankfully um, Marcus was great about it. 
basically said, if that's where your heart, you know, if that's where you want to be, and that's where your family wants to be, he's like, then go back home. You know, he's, I was worried that you never know how people will take that. You know, it's a very competitive industry. And, um, and I love Coach Freeman. And, but he was supportive in the sense of like, we're always going to be, like our friendship isn't going to be altered by this. And so we've talked plenty of times since. And so I'm confident that we'll continue to stay close. And Has it fun. hit you yet that, that you're back at Ohio State? I mean, that you're back kind of home. Yeah, I mean, it, it did when you pull up to the Woody and, you know, now they got, you know, the fingerprint thing now before it was right. some different. But, you know, of course it does. Um, it's hit me. And just seeing the – being back in these colors and being back home and um, it's just awesome. It's awesome to be, uh, be back and I'm just thankful for, for the shot. Really. How inspiring is it to see what Brian Hartline has done in kind yeah. of a similar path to what you're taking now? Brian's done, I mean, obviously a great job. Um, to see the growth that he's had and to see, I mean, obviously his recruiting is incredible, but also just the development of, of that room and to see him continue to grow has been encouraging. Um, you know, he's a great example of, of what can happen. And, you know, a lot of, there's, there's timing issues there as well. And I, I just love how he has taken every opportunity and he's been ready, you know, like, Opportunities present themselves as players, as coaches, but you have to be ready for the moment. And um, he's definitely ready for the moment. And that wide receiver room has taken off. And I know he's excited about the new challenge um, and the promotion. But it's, um, yeah, he's a great example of just a guy who put the work in, willing to go, and a good template for like, you know, former guys who want to come in and, and try to work and aspire to kind of grow in this profession do you have like a long-term goal of where you want to get to as a coach or are you just kind of in the moment right now no I think for me uh, it all starts with can I be the best linebacker coach in the country and can I and can I aspire to do that at my alma mater I think that kind of to me is the first thing that comes to mind and so I'll, I'll attack this year with that vision you know and already trying to dive in the playbook on, on Coach Knowles and what he likes to do and the techniques he likes to teach um, and to kind of figure out the system in that way. Uh, I was joking with uh, Tommy earlier that he might have to install the first few defenses to me, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> teach me a little bit, which will help him, you know. Once you are able to teach it, it helps you relearn it. And so, you know, we'll, we'll watch some tape together um, hopefully next week. And so it's just how do you, how do you go about immersing yourself in all the details of the scheme and then building from there. So that's the way I was as a player. I had to know it all or at least try to know it all because, you know, I was never a player that uh, you take a few false steps, you're going to track somebody down. You know, I had to be on top of it. I had to use anticipation. So just try to use the same mindset you know, as a coach. In terms you of said title, that you, you are, you know, a GA, mm -hmm. Jim is still a linebacker's coach. Yeah. What is the kind of the delineation of duties? Is he, is he said, I'm going to delegate a lot of this position stuff to you? Yeah, I mean, he, um, you know, we did uh, some position specific stuff even today, you know, um, during the workout, you know, team run this morning and it's like, you know, go ahead, go run individual, you know? So I think a lot, as long as it's coaching the guys up, that will be a, you have to make sure you're always speaking the same language as the coordinator, especially when he's the linebacker coach. And I did do it a year ago under Al Golden. You know, I was trusted with the linebacker room, um, but you're making sure you're speaking the language of what you can't be saying stuff that is, you know, contrary to what your boss wants to be taught. So I'm still learning all those things, but from my understanding, it's, hey, you know, really go and, and attack it and coach the room. You know, so film study, preparation, um, individual drills, and, and give him the freedom that he really had the last few years of his career, from my understanding, is the ability to kind of walk around, practice, um, and kind of see different areas of the, of the game. I don't know that he had somebody like you last year with the linebackers. I don't know if there was that, that person. Yeah, I mean, from my understanding, Coy did a lot of work with those guys um, and was able to do, you know, a lot of the individual with Jim. And so... Uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm sure this thing will evolve too as you go through the spring and you kind of figure out 
I mean, you're meeting each other for the first time, you're working together, and I'm just here to support, you know, him in any way possible and kind of see it. If he wants to do it a certain way, we'll, like, we'll do it that way. How much does it help that you've got veteran guys to help you steal? Yeah. And, you know, you've got veteran. Well, it's a huge blessing, and I, and I learned that last year because the group that I coached um, at Notre Dame was these are guys now that this year they are uh, fifth year seniors. So they were already guys who had graduated, seen a lot of football. I think that was their third D coordinator. So they had certain knowledge of the game that you could start with. And so the passion was really like, these guys are fine, but you know, it's the young kids who didn't have that experience that you're truly trying to build up. So it's been a, it's been a, it'll be a fun, It'll be fun really just kind of getting to know them as people. I think when you're a coach of players, you have to invest in them personally. And the more you know them personally, the more you can get out of them. And so I told them today after the workout, you know, I can't wait till my family gets here uh, so they can meet my daughters and that my daughters will wear them out. But you really, you try to bring them into your family because there will be times during a season when, you know, whether it's something personal in their lives or whether it's the season, like, not everything's all hunky dory, and you got they got to be able to know that they trust you, and then you're able to push them harder, you know, when they trust you. So it just, it seems like you were you had said excited. that okay. you had said that uh, the last time you talked ball was with the Saints, and you're talking to probably a couple thirty year old linebackers. Yeah. Then you have to go next time you talk ball, and you're probably talking to the sixteen and seventeen year olds trying to convince them why they should go to a school. Did yeah. you have to learn to fall in love with recruiting over the last year? When you said that you wanted to see if you liked yeah. coaching. How much was that, like, do I want to be a coach? How much was yeah. that of the recruiting process? Recruiting's definitely part of it. Um, you like it? Yeah, I, I, you have to like it. I mean, you got to love it. And the, it, recruiting is relationship building. And you're trying to figure out what's important to not only the kid, but what's important to the family. Um, and you just have to be willing to be consistent and build those relationships. And if you're not willing to, to put in the work and the time to make phone calls, to consistent, like the only thing that I haven't done in recruiting because I'm a GA technically is be able to actually go on the road and see high school coaches. But as far as that, like I met with all of our linebacker recruits as if I was the, the linebacker coach. So I would have a 30 minute meeting with them and then I would take them to, you know, the DC slash LB coach and then he'd go to free. Like, so I had recruiting presentations. I had ways of connecting with the family. I was responsible for phone calls. So you have to just be consistent in that respect and really just you're building a friendship and you're getting to know people and so the way that you always start to like people as you get to know any like friend or is you have to listen and you have to ask questions and you have to be just be authentic if you're trying to kind of cut it all short and skip all that you'll people will find you out really quick I think it was like 15 14 years ago that a linebacker in Ohio State decided that after a national loss, he was coming back for a senior year. Mm -hmm. Probably could have went to the NFL. Mm -hmm. Sound familiar? Yeah. A guy in your room now yeah. who kind of did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Big stage, takes a loss, comes back for a senior year. Could have went to the NFL. How excited are you to work with Tommy? Not in you know, obviously Tommy and Stu together, mm -hmm. but Tommy in general. There seems to be some similarities there. Does yeah. that excite you to be able to work? It with does. Him? It does. I'm excited to work with both of them. Um, just from everything you hear and that I observed today, you know, being at really the first workout that I've been at is the leadership, um, just the way they play the game. I've been watching some of the installs and you see the way Tommy plays the game, the way Steele does. So um, I'm excited for the whole room, but yeah, there's, there's a little bit of similarity there with Tommy. And, um, you know, I was just letting both those guys know, like reach out with, with any questions you have, you know, don't hold anything back. And, you know, it'll take me maybe a little bit to kind of get to the point in the scheme where I can help them. But there will be some stuff instantly that I'll be able to help with running back alignments or tight end splits or things that the offense is trying to attack you where I've been in their shoes, literally. And I know the issues and where we can get beat and how to protect ourselves in those situations. So I'm excited to work with those guys. And, and But really, it's, it's the whole group. And just to really, you got to earn their trust first. You know, and you got to prove that you, you care about them, and you know that's that's already started. Wide receiver, you it should be LBU, D line. Like, you should have all of that. I truly believe that. Um, now, selfishly being a linebacker, I believe that any defense stems from having alphas in the linebacker room. I feel like they have to push the 
the whole defense forward. So yeah, that's the that's the end goal. Um, it's a lofty goal, but I mean, when you're at a place like Ohio State, uh, you come here and once you've lived it, you understand what the standards are. And so it takes a special young man to understand like the standard is to win every single game. Like, and sometimes when you're playing teams that aren't up to your talent level, it's not just to win it, but win it impressively. Like that's the standard of what being a Buckeye is. And that pressure isn't for everybody. So you have to find the right kids, the most talented kids, the kids that fit, want to be mentally and physically tough, and then um, try to get them to, to come here. But it, it's, a, it's going to be, it's a lot more natural, obviously, when it's somewhere where you've played. And Ohio State, to a degree, sells itself. But you have to, when you have somebody who's been in it, walked through it, gone through the same stresses, times change, all that change, social media, I, I get all that. I'm not naive to all that. Um, but it's still the same, it's the same stuff as a young man that you're going, what you're going through. So I can relate, you know, to a lot of these young men and what they're going through. And I can help kids who haven't been here, you know, that want to come up and visit, give them a, an absolute honest perspective of what it's like to play here. And, and from you're just a talent standpoint, what you've got the chance to see from CJ, does he remind you of anybody? Just kind of your initial thoughts on a kid coming to a second year? I mean, just a ton of talent. Um, Unbelievable movement skills, looks the part, um, and just really excited to get to know him and to continue to work with him. Because you can see, you can see the talent there. I mean, it just, it just pops on the field and kind of the way he moves and uh, just watching him run today was was impressive. So there's a lot of facets to play in LB, but when you looked at all the guys and you're like, man, yeah, he's he's an impressive looking kid. And so I'm excited to, you know get to work once spring ball starts. You're not able to go on the road mm -hmm. recruiting, but you still have to navigate the NI all the time. Yeah. Have you, how are you adjusting to that? How is this yeah. different? I hate to compare one place to another, but it's different you know, at, at ND to here. And yeah. How do you, how do you do it? I mean, really you, you're pushing along those conversations really up the chain. Okay. Um, that's what we did there uh, at Notre Dame. And that's what, uh, you know, here, I mean, it's only been a few days since I've, I've been back, but I'm, you know, it's one of those things where like, as a grad assistant, I'm not, I can't, I can't guarantee, you know, anything. So it's obviously a constantly evolving thing in college football right now. And you're always trying to figure out what's real, what's not, does it even matter? You know, like <laughs> there's a whole lot that goes on with it. Um, and so all I know, like when it comes to that, I don't really try to worry too much about the NIL aspect. I try to worry more about like, do I have an, an honest enough relationship with this kid and his family to where he trusts me to develop him? And then if that's a factor in his decision, the power of Ohio State um, will, will come through. I'm curious, just logistically, uh, I don't know, maybe you've answered this. Did you? have a place in South Bend? Did you rent? I mean... No, we yeah, we sold the house here, moved there. Wow. And now we got to do it all over again. <laughs> okay, I didn't know. Like, yeah. I'll that... drive I'll drive back tonight because um, we're off tomorrow on Friday, so I'll go back tonight and see my family and enjoy the weekend with them and then come back late Sunday night. It's like deja vu, doing it all. You gave up a lot. I was doing it lot. the other way. I was doing it the other way last year, so... Do you want to live in the same area or are you guys looking in a different area or...? Um, you know, we're, we're all over the place right now with it, whether to rent for a few months or, you know, to where more homes pop up to, yeah, I, I would assume it'd be in the same area. Um, you know, we were out in Dublin, kind of the Dublin Powell area, but inventory is limited at this time. So okay. what was your first conversation with Tommy Eichenberg like and, and you know, what do you, as a guy who sort of you know, filled that role that uh -huh. he's filling now, what was that connection like? Did he grunt or did he speak? Because Jim <laughs> said that some of his first conversations were just in grunts. Yeah, no, it, we, it was, um, we first text communicated and I asked him to put me in a group chat with all the guys, um, just to introduce myself to everybody and become available and obviously get their numbers. Um, but no, we, we've talked, he just basically shared his, ex, his, his uh, excitement to learn from me as much as he can. And I just told him like, look, I, 
I'm looking forward to just to getting to know each other and to putting that time in in the film room and studying the game. And we'll just kind of see where this whole thing goes. But um, told him that I really respect him as a player from what, everything I know from afar. And the more you watch, the more you're just impressed. So I'm just excited to, to continue to dive into all the tape and kind of see maybe where I can help. And to then, heck, in the areas where he's strong, just continue to to build on what he's already accomplished. You How many words did he express his excitement? <laughs> oh, I don't remember. He's, yeah, you're right. I mean, he's not the he's not the most long-winded, but uh, but even today, he's like, hey, whenever you want to watch tape, you know, let's let's get after it. So there's not much uh, not much fluff, which could be a good thing. You, you mentioned about how different this job could have been for you if Tommy and, and Steele had decided to not come back? I mean, would, would it have changed your mind? Um, I'm not sure it would have changed my mind, to be honest with you, um, because, you know, there's only there's only one place that's home, you know, so having the opportunity to coach back where you were living in a place where you played and your alma mater, it's just so easy and naturally, you know, natural to sell it, you know, to people who are coming in and uh, and to pour your energy into it. And not that I did it, I mean, I poured everything into, into Notre Dame while I was there, and I was blessed with a really mature, really good room of, of linebackers and guys that... I'll be fans of, I mean, as their careers develop. Um, but it, it wouldn't affect my decision because ultimately it's the place and, and the people and the opportunity here that you're on the modern is what drew me. Generally speaking, what do you think about the, the 4 2 5 only having two starting linebackers? Um, what do you, I, know you, I know you guys are going to mix things up, but what do you think about the 4 2 5? Well, to be honest, I, I know that after talking to Heartline and a bunch of people about the scheme, is that it's it's difficult to go against, you know, and there's a lot to it. Um, I was talking with Coach Walton about it because I played for Coach Walton at Saint in, uh, when I was with the Rams. So Coach Walton was my DC for a year. And so we've had conversations about it. And I love how attacking it can be. I love how things are can be grouped together and can appear to be very complex to the offense. But once you get it down, very simple. The hard thing for me is like, you know, you know me, Dave, I, I want to dive in and know the ins and outs of everything. And it's like day three. So it's like, I have to calm myself down and be like, it's okay. It's going to take a little time to truly chew it up and spit it out. But I'm excited to keep learning it. Um, okay, he needs help getting in there anyway. But yeah, I mean, a lot of times, to be honest, when we were at Notre Dame, we played so much sub or nickel defense anyway, there was just, it was a mic and a will in the field. And I think that's where just college football has gone is that it's so spread out people are trying to stretch you horizontally and vertically so it's uh it's funny I was talking to Steve Spagnola who was my head coach at the Rams who's now DC with the Chiefs uh last year and I said any advice as I get into this and he said coach offense it's getting too hard to <laughs> <laughs> he said it's too hard to coach defense uh in football anymore so that's kind of that joke has always kind of stuck with me you Jake. mentioned that you sold your house here I mean would you have ever guessed a year ago that you'd be back here now no, um, but this profession is unpredictable at times. And what I've learned from being you know, a part of a staff is there are so many moving parts and timing plays a factor. And it's just hard to predict, you know, when is the right time to go somewhere. And, but I wouldn't know, I wouldn't have, if you would have said, hey, you're gonna move to you know, South Bend, Indiana and then come right back. Rent. I would have said like yeah I would have rented and then it would have been like no way you know I don't, I'm not sure there's a path for for how that would become available so the timing was right and I'm thankful I'm thankful it's here James coach day said there were conversations before you took the job with Notre Dame mm -hmm. what were those conversations like he said he wanted to make sure you were ready yeah. to be a coach yeah I think he referred to it as crazy enough to be a, yeah. a college football yeah why why did you decide to do it obviously you didn't need to and, and what were those conversations like at that point um we had had conversations about opportunities here before and timing is a part of it yeah. um sometimes there's not places on a staff to and look you certainly and after being in it for a year there are a lot of people that go into a staff and guys who do very critical important roles that you can't just say, hey, no, just create a spot or move. It, it has to be a timing to it. And so, you know, I, I tried and we had conversations. He did say that, are you crazy <laughs> enough to do this? 
And Coach Fickle had said some of the same things when I talked to Luke, um, I think three years ago. He had said, are you sure you really want to get in this thing? Um, and, you know, when I talked to Luke initially, and then it's like, ah, you know, I think so. And then you go back. But it, there was something itching in me to where it's like I had to find out. I'm like, otherwise I'll look back. I'll be too old to not have connections to get in there and try it. And, and so it just happened that Marcus, I mean, I talked to Marcus before, even when he was just D coordinator. And I just said to him simply, if you had any opening on your defensive staff, let me know. Um, I'll be willing to move to South Bend and try, you know, try it out. And then he gets named head coach, and it kind of all became a little easier for him to get me in there. And I just wanted to prove to people everywhere that I wanted to embrace the grind of it all. And so it's just, it is what it is. Was the itch? Well, just how did it match up to what you expected last year? Um, the hours were, the hours were the same uh, as I anticipated. You know, you knew how busy you were going to be. Just really, it was figuring out the hard, the most unique thing was just figuring out how you're going to teach and how you wanted to start teaching. Because you think you can start with like, hey, here's our base defense, here's what you got, here's where we're going to align, here's what we're going to look at, here are the adjustments. But then you don't realize that some young kids, when you say, hey, align in a 30, they look at you like, what the heck is a 30? And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to teach you about wide receiver splits and what routes to expect and all. Like, you got to start with the basics. And you got to make sure, so I'll never assume anymore with young players that they know what an A, B, C, D gap is or what you mean by certain terminology. So you start there, not to insult their intelligence, but then you start to build upon that. And so you just got to figure out how you teach, how you're going to approach it. And then certain guys need more love and certain guys need a little more kind of kick in the rear end, you know, to get going and motivated. Everyone's different. And so you're trying to learn personalities too, which is – which I think now is, which is fun because you're trying to figure out how do I, how do I motiv motivate player A versus player B? And then some guys like player C, I don't need to motivate him. He's self-motivated. He's going to do everything you ask. So. James, was, it, was, the, was, was there a primary itch? Was it uh, <clears throat> of wanting to teach of what you've spent years learning, et cetera? Was it, uh, was it wanting to be part of being on the inside of something from the other, from the other vantage point? Was it, did you miss, like Chris Bill said when he took the Lions deal? Yeah. He just wanted to be part of something that on, sa on Sunday there's a W or an L involved, mm -hmm. and he missed that aspect, that competitive aspect yeah. of it. What what drove you most to get back in to get into this? Well, it, it's wanting to impact young people, um, but it's also being a part of something bigger than yourself. Um, there were aspects of sports media that I enjoyed thoroughly. Um, to be honest with you, but then there was parts where it's like at the end of the day, I wanted to be a part of a team again. And when you're a part of a team, you're a part of a, a broader community to accomplish something great. And so it's that passionate drive of competition where there's a winner and a loser, similar to what Spiels is talking about. Yeah. And so you want to get in and really try to. So it's like the best of both worlds. We can go out there, we can compete, and our job is to win football games and to win them all. And sometimes win them impressively but the, at the end of the day it's also will some of these young linebackers or even the older guys will they leave here with a with a someone in their life that they can say you know what not only did coach Laurinaitis teach me ball but he taught me what it's like to be a good father and a good husband and yeah. you hope that now they're able to go on and and then help them realize the power of Ohio State and you can set yourself up for the next 40 years after ball. Hopefully every guy that comes through plays for 10 years in the league. But I can share with them, like I, I lived my dream out for eight years. I retired at 30. There's a lot of life left, you know? So the then what, whether you play 10 or whether you're just, hey, I'm here at Ohio State for four years, utilize the power of the brand and the network and the connections to set yourself up for the next 40 years after that. And so. Hopefully I can help them did this, see that. Did, did, this pa did this past year also set you up to uh, to know when to speak up and when not? You understand what I'm saying? I mean, meaning yeah. are, are you being part of a staff and yeah. being a lower member on the staff? It's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic, isn't it? It is. I, I just like to, you know, you see it from the player's perspective naturally. Because every time, even when, I, even when I look at a scheme, I'm learning it from, I always look at it from the backers out. It's just naturally, it's what I'm going to go to. And so whenever there's something put in and maybe you didn't think about it versus this formation, you just kindly 
okay, well, what's the check versus this? Yeah. And then it's silent. And then you just kind of let them talk about it. And then you're like, okay, what's the check versus this? Or you have a pressure based on the back. Well, what if the back's not offset and he's behind the quarterback? And there's silence. And then, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it stirs, like, so there's a way you look at it. Some of the other coaches do it too. Like, if you're a corners coach, you're like, hold on a second. You want me to do this? So it's just, you, you try to poke the issues that can come up or just be unspoken of. And most of the time they're found, but, yeah. you know, I have a, and I did the same thing as a player. You know, I would wear guys like myself out, you know, our GAs and QCs, because, you know, you look at the playbook pages and you're like, well, they better match up to what we're doing. Because I was like, I need to know what we're doing. I, I need to know where I'm going. Otherwise, I'm not making the play. I wasn't going to be out here running any 4-4 or anything. I, was, <laughs> I had to step right. October 28th, you guys go to Wisconsin. What's that going to be like for you? Oh, it's going to be uh, – it'll be interesting to see, you know, it'll be fun. I mean, Wisconsin's a great place to play. And then let alone with Luke being there, and who was obviously such a huge mentor to me. And, I mean, Luke Fickle got so much out of me as a player and pushed me so far past what I thought I could achieve. That really is a lot of the inspiration for, you know, coaching is trying to get kids to, like they don't even know where they can go or how good they can be. And so he won't be fun to like, you're not gonna be able to say hi to him before the game. He's too competitive. <laughs> It'll have to be a post game thing. You don't think you made him? No, I think Luke, I think Luke made himself, man. I think Luke, um, he was the same way with AJ, who was a guy that I certainly looked up to as a freshman. I mean, AJ Hawk to me was, still is, like, AJ Hawk's a dude. Um, and so I think, you know, Luke always had guys that he just continued to develop and got the most out of them.